And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello to everyone and welcome to the Weighing In Podcast. Unfortunately, there's no fights coming up. It's the end of the year. So my man and I, we're going to talk about everything that's coming up, all the things that we think about, things that have happened in the past, all the good stuff. My man Josh Thompson is back in uh. his normal state of California for the day, so he's not in his studio. But God damn, you're looking pretty good there, baby. Ah, uh, man, just <laughs> just kill me now. <laughs> uh, <coughs> no, it's uh, it's been it's been good. It's great. To, my whole family's in the other room. Uh, you know, we normally film late Tuesday nights and then drop early Wednesdays, and so I wanted to make sure I get it in. If you guys are hearing a little bit of an echo, I want to apologize, but this is the only room with any. Without family, kids running around everywhere. There's just, everywhere. just, just say it is what it is. It is, what it is. Yeah. but uh, we wanted to get, we wanted to make sure that we stay consistent during the holidays. I know a lot of podcasts will shut down between now and New Year's, but uh, we're going to try to keep on a, on this consistent schedule uh, for you guys, and uh, hopefully, you guys appreciate it. Look, there's not much to talk about. There's some big fight announcements that we have to talk about. Yep. And, uh, you know, there's a couple little boxing matches we'll touch on. We're not going to get too in-depth in the boxing, only based on the fact that this is more of the the hand-picked time of the of the year. Let me uh, <laughs> let me hand-pick my opponent. Let's yeah. get into it. When, when, when it's your, your, uh, your promoter, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and so when it's, you know, they start picking the harder fights around March, April, May, you know, and they pick it, they start picking them back hard again around September, October. So they can get paid right before Christmas. I get it. I understand. And uh, this is their time to, you know, handpick the opponents and uh, try to get easy money to come in. So I, I don't, I'm not, I, I respect the game. That's what I do. I get it. I get what they're doing. Smart on their part. No need to take jabs at them. I get it. I understand when you can make the money, make the money, do it, man, do it. No, no, but, uh, dude, that's the gonna... problem. Smart on their part. Yes. Boring on our part. It, it is. It is. And that's it when is. you look and you go, "Come on, man! That's not who you're supposed to be fighting." I get give, it. John. Give, give me the match that sh- that should be there. Yeah. No. No. I get it. I get it. I mean, uh, you know, but then hey, just you got you got to let them enjoy. They're they 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 worked hard. A lot of them, a lot of a lot of boxers. Are, they're hard workers, man. They put in some work. They've been doing it for a long time. You know, um, MMA is like a third. Think about it, thirty years, right? It's a, it's a new sport. I mean, and a lot of boxers come from, and not the MMA guys don't, but a lot of boxers come from very humble beginnings. And uh, it's very nice to see, like, how hard they work. I've trained alongside some top, top boxers, man, and they're they're just great people. Oh, they're they're good, good people, people you know. Not about it. No, I mean, and I think the MMA, uh, the MMA world definitely is, we've strayed away from it a little bit, I think, but we're... Like the original group or a lot of the original groups uh, of MMA guys kind of like the, the original, they, they're smart, they were educated, but they like to fight. You know, think about how many guys in the early days of MMA, they had, they had their. Well, that was the, that was one of the easiest parts for me when, you know, I was ending up in court, but you had all yeah. these people talking about their thugs. You know, these are, these are people trying to hurt each other. And it was very simple to go. Hey, let me just explain to you. I have, you know, so you know, Dan Severn. Dan Severn went to, you mm-hmm. know, Michigan State. There, and, and here is, oh, Don Chuck Fry, Bell, Cal Poly, Cal Poly, Cal Poly, Cal Poly <laughs> yeah, Randy Couture's, you know, <laughs> Oklahoma State. Was, you know, member of the military with the Army. It was easy. We had all of these college educated individuals that were participating, and it was like. You're trying to say they're dummies. They're not dummies. They know exactly oh. what they're doing. They know exactly what they're in. And these are highly educated people. You just don't understand what they're doing. And it, you know, it worked out for us in the end. But you know, that's that was the start. But it's different now, Josh. And you know it's different. You know, and you had a school, I had a school, and you see there's people that start off as kids going to learn the martial arts and then <laughs> Somewhere along the way, they decide, I want to fight. 
And instead yeah. of going to school now, a lot of them are taking that turn and they're going down the fight path instead of going towards college. Well, John, let's be honest. I mean, <clears throat> when I was accepted into some schools, the rate on the schools, okay, was you were paying anywhere a top, top level school was 26 to 30,000 a year. Yeah. 15, 15, say yeah, 15. Normally you could go to a good school somewhere yeah. in the area between eight to $12,000. Exactly. A year. The majority of California state schools, and I'm speaking just from the California experience. I don't know about other states. Okay. Yeah. But this California experience of state schools, San Jose state, <clears throat> um, you know, like you had um, you know, San Diego state, all those, they, you could go to them for anywhere between say eight, like you said, eight to say 22,000, somewhere around there, depending not on anymore. Not, not even close. No, it's not, ridiculous. No. I have a, I have a, <coughs> I have a niece that goes to Pepperdine. I mean, oh, it's, well, that's an expensive one anyway. It, it is, Just ask it is, job. but, but let's, I have a, I have a really close friend. I don't want to bring up his names, but um, his name, he's a really close friend of mine. He went there and and what they're paying now and what he paid, and he's my age, and he's, I think, a little bit younger than me, not much, like maybe a year. And uh, what he paid and what she's paying now is about $30,000 more. Yeah. I mean, John, just like, so when you, take, when you take the avenue of the way the kids can, hey, I can actually just spend my time dedicated to becoming a martial artist. <clears throat> and I'm not saying just martial arts. I'm talking about almost anything. If you put as much time that four years into the energy you put into college, you put into whatever occupation you choose to, a real estate agent, a police officer, whatever, those four years, I'm not saying you're going to get rich, but I'm saying that you won't be $250,000 of debt. Oh, well, that's it. Well, you know, first off, I'm going to, I'll say it straight out. I truly believe it. We've become a, a society where we push kids to college when it's not for every kid, you know? Exactly. It's not, not every, it, it is not the answer for everyone. And it's good for some and for other ones that it's not going to do anything for them with what they've decided they want to do in life. So I agree. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We've gone on too much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. About this. Hi. I mean, well, let's here, let's, let's talk about cooking next. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I mean, like, I guess to touch on one last thing, there was there were several kids. Look, Roy McDonald was somebody who I don't know if he ended up if he went to college or not, but he no. straight up was one of the first to start training MMA. He didn't train wrestling, he didn't train karate, he didn't train all these. He said, "I started off training MMA." Yeah, and he made it to the highest level you could possibly make. He never won the title, but he was right. He obviously whoa, had whoa, 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 he did win a title. Oh, yes, he did. Sorry, he did. No, okay. <laughs> I, I just put my foot in my mouth. Okay. And no, he did. He did. He did one the way he won a Bellator title. Sorry, I forgot about his fight with, with his first fight with Lima. Yeah. I just was thinking about the fight, the second fight with Lima, where he yeah. lost the title. <clears throat> um, but no, that's right. And then obviously, he had some of the most memorable fights. I mean, his fights with Robbie, oh. Robbie were this probably, I would say, in the top five of fights ever. And, you know, his. His fight with uh, with Lima, where he where he gutted through, he was two oh. two going into the fifth, and he couldn't walk on his leg. None of that. He found a way to win the fifth round and take the title from Lima. Fantastic man, like this. But he's a guy that came up fighting just MMA. <clears throat> and th that's that's remarkable. And you spend that amount of time doing it, and to see what he achieved throughout his career. Um, I don't know. I I, I think if people focused. 100% on what they want to do, that they would have no choice but to be successful. A lot of what the problem is, though, John, is that college helps helps kids find the resources on how to do it. Like, I, let's be honest. Like, if, if, for me, learning how to do something after fighting, say it's been 20, you know, it's 20 something years of me fighting, having to get online, having to get on the internet, have, not just the internet, but having to get, like, I didn't grow up with these things. So having to relearn, um, what's what's the uh, <clears throat> like learning how to do spreadsheets, all that stuff. Okay. John, this stuff sucks for me. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Like I'm like I'm like don't get me wrong. Like we had spreadsheets, you know. We had you know we had all this stuff in in college when I was here, in college. But here, it's real simple because nowadays yep. the spreadsheet is called Excel. 
Okay. Excel, no, no. Excel was around though back then. Yeah. It just, it just, we didn't, I didn't use it. It was, I didn't really have a lot of money. So what was I using it for? <laughs> you know, I was like, I didn't have any money. So what was I going to use a spreadsheet for and use Excel for? Like, Work out your yeah, overdrafts. But, and- okay. But I, I, you look at it and I, I, I watch these videos and I see these kids on college campuses. They can't even answer the most basic history yeah. question or how our government runs or what is, you know, name the three different branches of, you know, the government. They can't do it. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Well, I don't know what it is. Let me hang this. Thing I up. do. Someone's I not teaching people. Yes, this is true. And you're paying $60,000 for it. So There you go. What a waste. <laughs> hey, Let's up real quick. There we go. Right, we, I, we were going to try a different headset as John and I were trying to work it out. Because it didn't work. I was afraid the family was going to be loud, too loud. And uh, and so I was trying to get a headset, but it wasn't working out for us. So we wanted to make sure you guys got the clarity. You know what? We've talked long enough, but before we get started, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Look, like I was saying, we're going to try to drop shows for you. We are going to drop shows. We are. We're going to drop shows for you guys during the holidays. And why? There won't be a ton, there won't be a ton to talk about. But we're dedicated. But we, we're dedicated. Yes, we are. We're dedicated to our supporters, and we appreciate you guys. Share our content, okay? I know we've kind of got, I've gotten away from trying to force it on you guys. If you guys could share our content, get our, get our uh, content out there, you know, take our clips from our, from our pages. You know, I'm at At The Real Punk, Big John, or John McCarthy, sorry, MMA. It's not Big John. I always look up Big John and your name comes right up, but it's John oh, McCarthy yeah. MMA. <clears throat> but um, yeah, look us up. Podcast Dave uh, is on there as well. You guys can look us up. We drop our videos. Go ahead and share our videos. And uh, we want to thank you guys for continuing to support us. Hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up, like our content, and even comments below, even though, because I read them. Okay. And Miss McCarthy reads them also. So you got to make sure. At times. Yeah. Leave something nice though once in a while, guys. Okay. <laughs> leave something nice. That's all I'm looking for. I want a little, I want a little nice comment every once in a while. That's why you see, you don't, if you don't read the comments, you don't worry about it. You just keep on going forward. Right? I don't need but to look you know, in the rear view mirror. But here's the thing, though, John, is that when you hear from your supporters, your fans, your listeners, yeah. I feel more connected with them on how much that they don't like me. So I just <laughs> – <laughs> no, you just – you just. I mean, for me, I really do feel more connected. Like, okay, well, I hear, I hear what you're saying. You know, some, uh, some have, have asked some questions, you know, and – and, uh, you know, and then I think about it, I'm like, you know what, that's a good idea. Maybe we should do more of that. You know, those are things that we should bring up. And so, um, yeah, but, uh, let's talk yeah, about I mean, some okay, but, but hold on. Let me ask you this, but are there not times that someone leaves something that you want to reach through that little screen, grab them by the fricking throat and choke them? Nah, ah, not really. I'm so I, disappointed I do, in you. You've become no, so civilized. I have. But you know, you know, there's, you know, like there's that emoji where the hand reaches through the phone and like slaps the, the person. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I do think about that. So I don't think about <laughs> choking them. I just think about okay, like slapping the same thing. If I could only just reach through and just give you a smack. Yeah. It, it would make a lot of, it would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Let me see. There was like, all right, well, let's go ahead and talk about the first fight. What do we got here for us there, Dave? Uh, I wanted to, well, first of all, jo- uh, I wanted to see if John, I think you, you brought up that you had some comments just from the past weekend and that you might want to follow up on. Oh, no, you know, I was, someone was talking to me about the whole Colby Covington thing and they were, they were bringing up the fact that, uh, you know, why is it the UFC even, you know, holds on to people that, you know, talk the way he talks? It's like, well, come on, it's simple. It's money. Okay, Ooh. those people make money and, and, and any of them. Here's the one thing that you can you can almost Chael Sonnen was the one that really started. You know, Tito, I guess, was the first one that really tried. But Tito just wasn't very good at it. Let's just be honest. He wasn't a good trash talker. He wasn't comfortable speaking. Chael was the guy that, man, he never he never used a cuss word. He, you know, just, you know, came up with these little rhymes and riffs and and he sounded like you know a professional wrestler would in doing them he was he he had the right timing you know even when you do an interview and i would screw up his interview because he would give the line and he wanted to walk off and i would grab him by the neck say come on back here i need another question and he was a 
I'll give you this one, right? But, you know, he, he was great. He was unbelievable. But even he had that moment where he crossed the line. Conor McGregor had that amazing, and, I, and I'll say it was amazing when he had, the UFC had that media day where they had all the fighters up there, three rows, you know, of fighters, you know, and all the champions and, and he went through all of them, basically, you know, Donald mm -hmm. Cerrone tried to get to him, you know, and that didn't kind of work. And, you know, RDA, you know, being the champion, he said, you know, he came up with the, you know, baby, it's red penny night day, you know, whatever, all that stuff. You know, he, Chad Mendez, you know, chimed in he just shut him down. Jeremy Stevens, you know, said something about the hardest hitting guy, put that away. And he did it in a way that made people just go, wow. Yeah. Incredible. <sighs> And, and then there's, you know, that point where he can't continue in that fashion without crossing the line. When he got to the point, you know, with his fight with Habib, he crossed it. He, he just, he said stuff that you look and you go, you just turned me off to the point. I never want to see you win again. I don't want to see you fight. I don't want to see you win. I don't like who you are now. And that's, and I'm not saying that's everyone, but that's a lot of people. That's the way they look at it. And, and Colby had that same thing. And, and when you get to the point, and this is the one thing that I will, I will say about with Colby is even after that fight, and, and I'm not, I know Dana said that Colby looked old and slow. Leon made him look that way. Let's just be honest. We, you know, I hate yeah. this. Leon doesn't get the credit he deserves because it was the way that he went out in the beginning and you saw Colby shoot on him and he stuffed the takedown and all those things. Colby looked the way he looked because of Leon Edwards. Okay. Flat out. You can sit there and say anything about the ring rust. Maybe he had a little bit. I'm not saying he didn't, I'm not saying that he shouldn't have fought more. I thought he did. I thought he should have. It was one of the things I said, but it was Leon Edwards that made him look that way. Mm -hmm. You know, even at the end of it, you know, Colby, you know, with, you know, in that freaking character, you know, who, who did he put it on? Oh, the judges, the judges don't like him and don't like America. And that's why, you know, you know, it's like, like the judges don't have enough problems. They got that fight perfectly right. Did a great job <laughs> and they still have someone put him down, but Colby and, you know, he crossed the line with what he said about Leon's father and you look and you go how many people truly you said it i'll never pay to watch colby covington fight again <clears throat> and, I, and how many people did he lose because i do think there comes that point with everybody that does the trash talk where they'll do something that someone goes i'm, I'm not i'm not watching you anymore <clears throat> yeah it's not like i said look i started off this i knew we were going to go in this direction talking about Colby, talking about the trash talk, talking about Sean Strickland, yeah. talking about uh, Drakus and, and, you know, and their altercation. And the reason why I started off the show talking about MMA fighters being educated is because we've gone away from what it seems to be an educated group of athletes to, to this nonsense. Yeah. But be, if you can't put it together, which is so re remarkable that, that uh, Connor is, I, I don't know if he's college educated, I don't know, but the no. way he put his words together Fantastic. was phenomenal. It, you, you just, it was phenomenal. Yeah. And I always, for me, his, his, I know he broke out obviously with the red panty night and all that other stuff, but that whole, like the double champ does whatever the fuck he wants. That to me was, was so on cue. And oh. it's one thing, it's one thing to deliver like this stuff during press day. It's, it's one thing to deliver there, but to deliver it in the moment after a win that which he had oh. well, what is the, well, thousands and thousands What was the, the, the one that he said that was, I mean, we're not here to take part. We're here to take yeah. over. Yes. I mean, you look and you go, oh, God damn, man. What a, what but a line. It, it, was a remor it was, like I said, remarkable. That type, that type of trash talk, that type of um, – banter back and forth is what got people to fall in love with him oh yeah and then on top of his fighting i mean the way he fought was you know was very impressive also knocking people out you know hey don't get me wrong i do we we all know that there was a lot of fights that were set that, that his that fit his style sure but the ufc knew what they were doing smart you know they 
Yeah, and they were smart. That's a that's that, that's a little bit of structure set up like boxing. Let me pick the fighters that we think he will best fit that will best fit his style to make for entertaining fights. You can't say they were scrubs. No. He was just because what Max Holloway was one, yep. Justin Poirier was one. Yep. Like there was, you know, Dennis Seaver was no slouch on the feet. He was he wasn't a big, you know, he was thicker and stockier and stuff, but he was no slouch on the feet. He no, was he was fighter. he would stand and sling with anybody. Exactly, and so um, you know, <clears throat> he had a lot of he had a lot of criticism because of the Chad Mendes coming in on short notice to take the fight and all this stuff. No, that wasn't you know, his fault. That wasn't his fault. I agree. No, I get it. But, but you know, we, we, we uh, not we people would say I did say like you know it would he is taking this fight against Chad. If Chad had a full camp, I'm not sure that this fight would have been the fight that the UFC would have given him. You know, uh, and that's not on his fault either. He no. probably would have fought him. You know, he seems Connor at that time in that era of his his uh, his thing. Like during that time, I believe that he would have fought anybody. They just chose to make sure that he was on the right track to be marketable because of his gift of gab. Um, but like I said, I started this whole pod, the podcast out with we went from Cal Poly educated Chuck Liddell, who maybe had a mohawk and you know didn't look the part as if he was educated with a tattoo on his head. But man, the guy was college edu- educated. You know, uh, Randy Couture. You know, I mean, like Oklahoma State. I, these these guys all. Uh, Mark Coleman, Ohio State. I mean, like let's not be let's not be uh, 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 Kevin Randleman. Ohio you know? State. Ohio State. Like let's not be mistaken. Like these guys were all educated, and this sport came at a time when they got done out of college, going, "Okay, I just spent my whole life wrestling or my whole life playing a sport or being an athlete." And nothing to prove for it. Yeah. So this I can make 10 grand. I can make 12 grand. I can make 15. I can still work a full-time job and do this because I'm way more superior of an athlete than all of these guys. You know, the most wrestlers were superior athletes. They just had to learn the martial art. That's why they were getting caught by jujitsu guys like guys like Hoyes. But once they learned, yeah. damn, guys like Mark Kerr, guys like Mark Coleman, guys like Grand Couture. Dan Henderson, they all made names for themselves because they were college educated, because they were smart. They understood wrestling. They understood the grappling. They learned it. They knew how to fast track their way and have success. We've gone away from that. Now, a lot of these fighters, I think, are, have come up, you know, boxing, kickboxing. They've, become up, they've come up MMA style. So they're better in terms of in there. But the trash talk has gotten to an all-time low of just – Straight out of like a uh, a playground setting. It's disgusting. It's it's <laughs> it really is. It's like I wouldn't. Even, it's not even like mom jokes. It's it's worse than that, John. It's what's the worst thing that you can say to somebody to get a reaction out of them? Bringing up your father's, you know, murder. Bringing up, you know, whatever, whatever it could be. You know, it just your father's death, your father's murder, like. Uh, your your countries like i get the whole country thing you know like but things that are out of a fighter's kind of control i don't know i just leave your religion leave wives kids the things that connor said about habib's wife you know call i think called her a towel head. like what the like what the fuck where do we go with this and when you get to like you said when we get to this point though john is we're losing fans we're not gaining them like these things now. And I get it. People are, I saw, I read some comments where people go, no, no, now they're going to pay to watch them lose. No, no, no. You're going to have some that will. Yes. But you're actually losing more. Let me give you an example. The NFL is at an all time high right now, but the stadiums are not at all time high. You want to know why? Because drunk idiots have ruined it for people to take their families. Well, there's a whole lot of reasons. You're right. There's drunk idiots, and it's cost you so much to take your family there. This is true, yeah. That it's like, true. what do you expect out of the average man? Yeah. Not yeah, easy. but so but there's, there's you know, people getting, like, the Niners and the Raiders when they play. Like, oh. almost guaranteed someone's going to get stabbed. Hell, someone's what are you talking about? I, I used to work the games as an L.A. police officer and stuff. And yeah. It was because that way I got to see the games, too. So it was kind of cool. You know? But And so – Look, what I did admire, though, was I admired how, and maybe it was done on purpose, which I, I believe it was, but not thinking that, like, this would happen, was the Strickland and the Dirkus thing. 
is that they, that they would actually go to blows. They expect a little bit of back and forth, you know, the, you know, but I don't think they expected, no. I don't think they expected the, the jumping of the chairs and all that stuff. No. Um, <clears throat> it's just not, it's not the way that this sport, it comes no, down. No, but it's it's also, oh. it comes down to what Scott Coker told you at, at a certain point in your career. Hey, if you want to fight for free, tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Don't fight for free. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's true. It's yeah, dumb. it's true. Like, uh, <clears throat> it's not even like, but the fighting for free, but then going to the. I skipped all over the place, you guys. Realistically, there's so much to talk about. Like, but let's let's just go with the trash talk right now. The trash talk has overstepped its boundaries, and we're losing people. I, I believe. I really believe. You know how many people I had text me going, I, I don't know. I they're, they're like, I really just, I don't really care to watch it anymore. Like, sure, if it's pay-per-view and there's like one guy. But like, people that were Colby fans were like, yeah, I'm done. Yep. I've lost. It's turned into a clown show. Yep. It's turned into a clown show. And, and, and I'm going to, this is the last thing I'll say about the Colby situation is even, <clears throat> I got sent this today by Podcast Dave. What was the thing you said today by pod, today the podcast? Day? Sean Strickland Kobe thing that said uh, Sean yeah. landed more punches than Kobe. Oh. Yeah. So even <laughs> even look at even the diehard Kobe fans like podcast day, like we're slurping everything up that he says. All of a sudden now is sending me stuff going crazy to think that Sean Strickland landed more punches that night. That was just funny. That Kobe Covington fought at UFC two nights. That was just funny. That was just funny. It was funny. <laughs> but, but that's the thing. Now the fans, like the fans, like that the Dave was of Colby. I am. Are now all of a sudden now betraying him like no. this, sending memes out like this, making fun of him. Hold, 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 hold it, Dave. It's like hold a clown it. show. You don't think that that's not betraying him? No, it's just it's a, somebody made a funny meme, and I just <laughs> thought it was funny. That's and betrayal. I, <laughs> betrayal. No, I make funny clips of you all the time and send them to John. It's like it's not betrayal, is it? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I just uh, it's this is the thing though is it, it it's a real thing it's a real thing where people that were Colby fans are not Colby fans anymore, and this will affect uh, the numbers and viewers of people that watch the sport. And um, if it continues on, where people make fun of people's parents that have passed wives um kids it's i think that, that we're going to run into a problem because we are different than other sports john we are a combat but, sport. but it was interesting if you listen to dana during his press conference because they asked him about the whole thing he says and he goes look you know uh, it disgusted me what you know colby said he goes but i will tell you that at that press conference when he did that we and, and I I totally believe him. He goes, our people are monitoring. He goes, the pay per view buys at that moment went up twenty five percent. Yeah, which tells you, mm-hmm. well, it's working with people. It's working okay, with a lot so of people. Let, let me ask you this: Did it go up? The twenty five percent go up to watch him lose? I believe it did. I don't. It could be. Okay. But I don't think that the renewal on the twenty five percent will be there next time. Uh, it may now not. it could have been it could have been to see if if Lee, if it affected Leon more. There's the way to look at it. Did they tune in now to to watch Leon potentially knock him out? Did because twenty twenty percentage of the twenty five percent was to watch Leon knock him out for those comments. Sure. The other twenty five percent or the other percentage of it was to see if Cole, uh, to see if Leon would fold if it got to him and he'd fight emotional and he'd mess up. So you have both. Yeah. Okay. So you have both. And you watch Kobe maybe and watch maybe Kobe knock him out or beat him up or submit him or something. But there's all three of there's all three of those things. Yeah, Dave. But do those but those same numbers, do they tune in to the next free press conference to try and see if they get the same type of thing out of it? (laughs) Well and then I don't no matter what, when you watch and I and I've heard people say, Well, he didn't really say that. Look, you watch that damn way in and when they come together he said he says i was in, I was in character i was in character he says it twice yeah. okay yeah. which that's been, that's know, actually being disputed john i know it's being disputed it has been disputed but disputed is what 
he said um he said something like oh you think i'm a character or something like that that's, like, that's not what he said well i'm just telling you that's what people are saying but, as, as but like, i don't care you even the ufc who put that thing out they put the damn subtitle on it oh, okay they're the ones that put the subtitle on it. Why are they going to, you know, they're not going to sit there and say, oh, this is what he said. Yeah, the, this is this is where I go back to the Connor thing. And Colby did this is we all knew that that Chael was a shtick. Then he went over, he went, he went um, over the line with the Jenna Jameson conversation, you know, talk yep. about Tito. He went over, the, he, he crossed the line. And then the same. But it was, a, you got to admit, and again. He, he never cussed. He never said it was. It was. It was a great line. It mm -hmm. just was wrong to say. Yeah. To that person. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you're now attacking the person that they're living with, the mother of their children. You, you can't yeah. do that. Yes. The uh, you know, and then the just they just have. It's gotten to the point where it's just too much, John. I I don't, I don't even want to. I don't even know how to even to keep going on about it. It's just it's it's gotten to the point where it seems so uneducated, and it's and it's uh, it's too much. You know, <clears throat> you had Connor doing it, you know, with Habib's wife, you know, and you have Chael do it with um, Tito's wife. You know, you've had Connor do it with Dustin's wife. Yeah, absolutely. Connor uh, did it with Dustin's <clears throat> wife. You know, and he did it in, in on national television, sour defeat kind of thing with the leg, all these things like. It's just not. It's just. My point was that the tw the twenty five percent of the people that paid to watch, they watched to watch him either lose and get knocked out, or they watched to see if Leon would fold, or to maybe even watch him win if he could get it done after talking all that trash. <clears throat> but how many of those twenty five percent are going to tune in next time? Are they going to be like, oh man, none of it lived up to the hype? That was one. Two is I didn't like that guy. Anyways, I just tuned in to watch that one episode. Now I know it's trash. There's no reason for me to watch this anymore. Well, you know, like you're only going to get now a small percentage of them to tune in for now, maybe just their favorite fighter. But isn't that the whole thing when it comes to the person that is the heel? And that's the role that Colby, you know, took on. And the person that's talking trash, it only lasts for as long as you can continue to win. Mm hmm. Because as soon as you start to lose, and look at, you can say whatever you want now. Last five fights, two and three. Okay, you have that same as you look at Connor. Take a look at his losing streak. When you're losing, people go, "Yeah, I'm not buying anymore. It's done." <clears throat> so no, I, I, I agree. Argument. What's that? What's that? I said it's very one sided though, because you're you're saying he's two and three, but you're also but you're forgetting to say that he's three. Three losses in title fights, so it's not really like a fair take. Meaning, meaning that when it, okay, let, let's put it this way: I will again. I'm not saying that Colby Covington is not a good f athlete, not a good fighter. He is. He's good. He's just can't reach that level. Kenny Florian was a good fighter. Kenny Florian was a talented guy, and Kenny Florian had, I, think, I believe, I want to say three title yeah. shots and he lost you know he he couldn't get it done in any of those that, that does not make it to where kenny florian is not a good fighter he was you know it can happen where you you know you just can't you can't reach that pinnacle you know and people there's gonna be people out there saying well colby won the interim no interim ain't crap talk to dave about it <laughs> <laughs> you know and it's it's just not it's yeah. not the same because there was somebody else that was actually better sitting there with the title and that couldn't fight or whatever was in a contract dispute or whatever at the time. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, you just look and you go, you can sit there and say whatever you want about, Oh yeah, but those are in title fights. Yes, they are. But it just says that you're not that guy to get to that level because now you've been beat by two different guys in those three fights. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're we're or we're we we've got to do a show this uh, when I get back. We've got to do a show where we play matchmaker, right. where we take like the Colby. Who does Colby fight next? Who well, does? Did you, did you see who he called out? 
No, who do you call out? Shavkat? No, Wonder, oh, Wonder Boy. Boy. Are yeah. you kidding? <laughs> He's not calling out Shavkat. <laughs> John, that like the only fight that I care to see Wonder Boy in is MVP. Yes. That's it. But he's, he, he's got to get past somebody first. <laughs> well, the, the, my, my thing is with Colby, though, is right. Like you went from now you pick now you, you're picking the guys that are in their 40s again. Yes. Who is it that he has fought to get his wins? Mm-hmm. They've been guys 38, 39, 40. That's the whole point. You know, when he fought like, the, you know, when he fought the like 32 he, year old that was fast, look at what happens. Speed you know, you know, he, you know, who he should fight. Who's that? Jake Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so he should go to the PFL yes. and take on Jake Paul. I like that. I'm, yeah. It makes, you know, they both like to fight older guys, you know, and <laughs> he did 45 though. And Steven's number six. And uh, so that's exactly yeah. making a not bad call. Yeah. We're shop cut at. Three. Three. Yeah, so I mean, like, wouldn't you think you'd want to fight up, though, right? Like, to try and get back to a title shot? Wouldn't you think you'd want to do that? Or you just want to fight the older guy? Gilbert's, okay, but let me Gilbert's add, on a let win me streak. Add. Bilal's on a win streak, and Shavkat's on a win streak, so they're not going to fight down. <laughs> well, and if you look at who's at number one, which is Kamaru Usman, who I think is an unbelievable fighter. I love Kamaru. He's on three. He's on a three-fight losing streak. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that doesn't mean, look, he took the fight against, you know, Chimaev with you know a week's notice, and I th- I do believe if it had gone more than the three rounds, I thought he he would win it. Yeah, you know, but Crazy. you know he is on a three fight losing streak, and he's number one. Yeah, and they're not they're, you you know they're not gonna put him back into a title fight with mm-hmm. Edwards right now. Yeah, I I just I think I think we can make a pretty good show. I'd be in matchmaker for each wage class. You know, just pick pick a fight. You know, let's just pick. Let's let's make let's make let's make a fight card. Um, you know, whether it's for the UFC, whether it's for PFL, whatever it is. I think we just make we just make matchups. I mean, John, who knows? Maybe our future is in matchmaking. <laughs> Maybe it is. You Not know? like we haven't done it already. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and not gotten paid for it. That's all right. Uh, all right, well, hey, Dave. You know what? We exhausted the uh, banter and the. Talk we did. I'm the, sorry. It's almost like a, it's almost like we're complaining, but look, I just I would like us I would like the sport to get away from that type of banter and that type of trash talk only based on the fact is because we this sport combat sports in general and mainly boxing and mainly uh, MMA we're going to get way more criticism than if the NFL and the NBA and all. Because we're considered uneducated thugs that just want to beat people up, and we've got to we've got to create that separation, you know, um, to to tell to show people that we're not just fucking uneducated thugs, that we that we have something more to offer than just to than trash talking and punching people in the face. And I know that there's people see the the qualities in a lot of our top level fighters. But I, I think moments like that, and there was no different than the Nashville thing, John. We were on CBS, and bless his heart, Gus Johnson goes, these things happen in MMA. <laughs> and that, that killed us. That killed us on CBS yeah. until we were just recently on it again. You know what I mean? Like those things, those things happen. That's what people thought of us and our sport for so long. Okay, and um, and and now we we finally started to get away from it, and now we're putting ourselves right back in it. True. Oh. All right, Dave, give us some fights, buddy. Let's talk some action. I know we we, <laughs> we well, that, hold, that, hold, we beat that dead horse. I just want to say the first fight that Dave's going to pull up, this is going to turn into a nasty situation and unto itself. So let's go. <laughs> Yeah, we got um, uh, we got the official announcement that Ian Gary versus Jeff Neal for March 9th. This is um, uh, and it's going to be in Miami. It's obviously following Ian Gary falling off the last carbon pneumonia, um, and uh, now he got a new opponent almost immediately. He got an opponent almost immediately, and a guy that he had put uh, something that Josh and I do 
we do put other people's faces on our shirts and, and wear yes. those shirts. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. But Jeff Neal did not think it was funny that Ian Gary took a picture of him that was a mugshot and put it on a shirt and is, was wearing it. So he's not happy with Ian Gary. But I think this is a great matchup. John, I love this fight. I, I don't have a problem with that band. I thing. don't either. I, I that one, I, I look and I go, no, no, no. That's well, look at. If you ended up doing something that puts you in the position to have your picture taken by a police department, and you yeah. are on the mugshot list, which God knows how many people I know are. Yes. Well, hey, you gotta live. Gotta live. Live with it. It's no big deal. You know, suck it up, Buttercup. It's okay. You know, it's behind. Yeah, but what about it's, you're, 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 Gary saying he sl- he was beating his kid? No, that was what? that was um, Neil Magny. Oh, oh, my bad. Sorry that was that. Neil Magny, and that was, and that and that you know I I I don't know, even know how all that came up, but again, you're now you're, you're going into something that's like, yeah, you better have righteous freaking evidence that someone's doing something. I, it just, yeah. And then you have Dave right now just spreading misinformation everywhere. <laughs> um, very, very <laughs> I apologize. But uh, but seriously, as far as the matchup, I think this is a really good because look at Jeff Neal with his hands is good. He is mm-hmm. a, he's a good stand up fighter. Ian Gary is long. It's going to give him some problem stuff. But Jeff Neal is the real deal on his feet. Ian Gary is the real deal on his feet. I think it's a great matchup. I think that I'm going to lean the advantage towards Jeff Neal. I mean, okay. we've seen we've seen Ian Gary get dropped. Yeah. He survived, um, and he came back and up winning the fight. But that being said, Jeff Neal is he, he's not a conventional style fighter. Like he he's a grimy, just get in your face, make it aggressive. He's he's somebody that I don't know. I, I've said this before: styles make matches. We all say that. But when you have a fighter who is somebody who who um, Likes to fight with a lot of technique. That's why I believe, like a lot of top level kickboxers that come into MMA, they're like, "What the heck?" Like, there's because we don't really have a lot of MMA guys don't have orthodox style. They don't have no, that standard. They, traditional they don't have a, sm- a smooth technique. And so, like, they're used to things coming a certain way, and all of a sudden, now you've got this little up half jab, half uppercut. Like, no one, you know, like grabbing just, at the legs, all of a sudden throwing an overhand yeah. right. It's like. There's a lot more to think about. I know that and I understand that. But the smoothness of the kickboxing comes out almost like delayed because we're not so smooth. That's right. And so those top level kickboxers, Ian Gary, I wouldn't say he's a top world class level kickboxer, but he's a good kickboxer, a good stand up. How will he deal with Jeff Neal, who is someone, excuse me, somebody that can just rip, who can just probably rip right through you? He'll throw heavy shots. He will come forward. He'll put pressure. If he lands, he's putting you to sleep. I mean, Jeff Neal's got power. Yeah, he does. And, and we saw it. Ian Gary, he can be dropped. He can be dropped. So, and he also, when he got dropped in that fight, his defense on the ground was atrocious. Yeah. It was horrible. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> John, he, he, almost, he, was, he almost got knocked ground. Upon I know he was hurt. I get he was hurt. But there was... There was moments there where I was like, "Dude, you weren't." He wasn't even. It's, it's so funny. I was just watching a fight from one at one fighting championship, and it was a uh, Alex Silva against a kid from Japan, uh, Haka, Hakataki, I believe. Or I'm probably saying it wrong. What an unbelievable ground fight! Back and forth. You should, dude. You got to watch this fight. It's incredible. Send me the link. Is is it on Prime? Uh, yeah. There you and, go. And uh, and I look and I go, yeah, but Ian Gary's not good on the ground, but either's Jeff Neal. <laughs> he's, he's, not, he's not that guy. These guys are going to slug it out on the feet. You know, it's, it's, I'm not saying you know Jeff Neal can't put him down. He can. Yeah. But the one thing I'll give Ian Gary is, hey, he's shown he's shown a toughness in getting his ass yeah. off of that's true the canvas and coming back and fighting hard and winning. Yeah. So, look, I've heard nothing but good things about Ian Gary in terms of like. He he can he can fight like oh, it's yeah. not just a padded record. He's no. got skills. He can fight. Uh, he can fight. He's a good fighter. 
Yeah. Jeff Neal, I think if he just makes it a dirty, grimy fight, like puts pressure. Got to be in his grill. He's got to be in his grill. He's got to make him fight a very uncomfortable fight. And I think yeah. he will. Because if you stand at distance, he's going to get he's gonna get tapped. He's going to get just not tapped. He's going to get what I meant was he's going to get pieced up. Yeah. He's going to get picked apart. He's going to get a jab, a kick, a push kick. Uh, you know, all these little, these little things that keep you at bay, it's going to get him guessing. It's almost, it's very much like trying to, Probably fight like someone like a Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Like, oh man, like, oh, it was a jab. Okay, now you switch stance. All that. You know, like those type of things become annoying. If Jeff doesn't get in the face right away and take that away and make him fight an uncomfortable fight, you could end up seeing like a, a Colby Covington, Leon Edwards style fight where Jeff's on the outside going, how do I get in? What do I do? He starts second guessing himself. I don't think he'll fight that way. I think he, uh, I think he's, he's, he may fight with a little bit more emotion. Right. Uh, and then Leon does. Then yeah. Leon does. Yeah, well. did, but but I think it's I think it's going to end up being a good fight. Yeah, so do I. What do you got next? Next one here is Gilbert Burns versus oh. Jack Della Maddalena. That guy needs to come up with like a short name, doesn't he? Like Jack Demad or something like that. Yeah, just JDM. That's the, that's the yeah. That's it. JDM. It's real simple. There you go. I don't know. I kind of like I kind of like Dave's Je- like like. Della Mag, like, like almost like a like a, mad. a magazine, like oh, a magazine. Mad, and, mad is oh, ma- mad. Madalena. Mad. It's, yeah, it's not oh, Mag Magdalena. It's Madalena. Jack Madalena. de Mad. I liked Mag though because it sounded like a magazine. Like How about just clip. Jack Mad? Jack Mad. There Jack you go. Yeah. He's Jack Mad. We, we got to figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it out for him and just tell him we want five percent. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Again, you take a look. You know, this this is one of those ones. You talk about a guy, uh, he's not bad on the ground. Madeline is not bad on the ground, but he cannot be on the ground with Gilbert Burns. He no. will be in a world of trouble if Burns is able to get this fight to the ground. Now, in the stand-up, I love Madalena. He is clean. He throws beautiful combinations. He's got nice footwork. He gets himself in. He cuts angles. All the things that you want to see. Gilbert's not bad on the feet, though. Gilbert on the feet will do bless you very much there. But Gilbert is, you know, he's got power in his hands. He can make you, you know, make you be cautious at times based upon the power in his hands because he, he can swat. You know, I look at this as this is a this is a fight for Gilbert to take over. And Madeleine, if Madalena can win it, it's saying a lot. It is saying a lot, but I look at a couple things. I get I think Madalena has the better stand up. He does. But I think Gilbert in the first round, round and a half, is going to be the better stand-up fighter. He's faster. Yeah, let me explain. He's faster. He throws aggressively, and he has no fear of the of the takedown. No. Like, that's where Mad- that's where madalena has got to be like, oh, I'm getting barraged. Oh, shit, a takedown. So he can't afford to just cut loose with his combinations because the takedown will come right after that. Yeah. So he's going to have to fight a little bit of a different fight in that first round. <clears throat> And then we've seen Gilbert because he throws with every like all his Tired. might and everything. He starts to slow down a little bit. He's a dog. He'll stay in there as we oh, saw yeah. against Shamaya. He'll stay in there, but he he starts to slow down. The pace in his output starts to slow down. Still has a little bit of power, but I think what gives him that power is his explosiveness on the feet. He comes in aggressive. He knows that people are afraid of being taken down. You do not want Gilbert Burns on top of you. Is just is probably I'd say top five in the in the sport. You know he's just he's good. He's just really good. But Matt <clears throat> Madalena though in this right in this fight, he's gonna have to kind of weather the storm early and do what he does, and then start ripping to the body, start getting to the shots, so body shots, head kick, you know, uh, body kicks, leg kick. He's gonna have to start putting his combinations together and start making Gilbert guess. Do I shoot now? Do I not shoot now? Do I throw hands? Because yeah. if you just stay with boxing centric, then he's not worried about the knee up the middle. He's not worried about the kick, you know, as he tries to shoot. You've got to mix it up. You've got to keep him guessing. Yep. And Madalena can do that. And this is a big I feel like this is a big step up in competition for him. I, and Gilbert's been there, done it all. I think this is a huge step up, you know, in competition right now. You take a look at, you know, he's fought some good competition. But never a guy that's sitting there, you know, top five. 
like where like that's the other thing. When I said well, let's do a show about matchmaking, this is what I'm talking about. Like what where is Gilbert at right now? Like he's kind of in in no man's land. Yeah. You know? He's in that position though. You you could look at Gilbert and say he's one fight off of possibly getting another title shot. He really is. Is he though? I mean, they're but, not but treating I, him but, like But I'm is. being honest. It's not a fight against Madalena unless he just obliterates him. Yeah. So it's a tough That's true. One. I mean, yeah, yeah. When you're fighting someone like Madalena, you need to get him out of there. Yeah. He's got to get him out of there in a round, right? If he finishes him before the round before round three, I take it back. If he finishes him, period. I think I think that that, that says enough. The, to, I wouldn't say give him a title shot. Because who do you have? You have that line, right? You've got Bilal next. Well, right, right now he, he's caught. Yeah, okay, but that's mm. that's really where he's at. Because you've got Bilal sitting there that that's going to be next, mm. and you would you would say that okay, Rachmanov is going to be the one after that. If you know whoever wins it, if Bilal wins it or if Leon wins it, but after that, really, you're kind of looking. Gilbert's right yeah. there. Do you, this is what I believe. Uh, this this would be nice and ideal, I think. But I'm being selfish, of course. Is that what you do? Is you put Bilal and Leon, and then you put Shavkat and um, if Shavkat Shavkat. I just don't won, know if the UFC would want to do that. No, no. Put Burns and Shavkat. Yeah. And then, but what I'm saying though is Burns and Shavkat. But then what you do is you have them as the backup. But if so, if something happens in the main event, you slide yeah. Shavkat in there, and Burns would be fucked. You know, but it's it's kind of where they're, they're that's where they're directed, anyways. Yeah, but <laughs> the UFC is very very high on Shavkat. I agree. Very, very I high. agree. The other thing too is that you, know, you have to remember both of them are trying to kill Cliff. That's Gilbert right. is the Gilbert's the Jiu Jitsu coach there, exactly. And so I think they want to avoid that that just having that problem at all. Yeah. So, but in my mind, like I said again, for selfish reasons. Okay, I'm not. I'm not here to pitch for for the UFC, and what I, I'm here to pitch for my own selfish reasons. I want to see that. Okay. <laughs> but, right, uh, Dave, overall, the Matt, the Madalena fight and that and Gilbert Burns fight should be a good. One. That's a good one. All right, big one here, uh, Kevin Holland versus. Oh, we knew about this one how many weeks ago? <laughs> well, we we <laughs> heard it, we heard it leaked, yeah. but uh, it was never yeah. it was never confirmed. No, and then there's that one thing came out saying he was going to sign with the PFL. So right. Michael Page did sign with the UFC. Congratulations to him on that. And him going up against Kevin Holland. This is an interesting fight. I really like this fight. I, I do agree with you. If I was going to see the perfect matchup that I would love to see in the 170 pound would be MVP against Wonder Boy. I think that would yeah. be just a classic <clears throat> fight. But this one right here, it's just a step behind it. I have mixed emotions on it. Why? Because I want to. I want to. Yeah, I have mixed emotions on it. Like I wanted to see him fight like a top contender. Yeah, he these fight. Look, at, if there's one thing that Kevin Holland is, he is a active fighter who fights anybody. And puts on, for the most part, usually a good performance. There's times when, you know, he has had his moments, you know, shot when he fought against Shavkat and everything got, you know, mixed up and the, all the opponents changed. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Shemayev. I said Shavkat. That's who I meant. Shemayev. Yeah. Okay. That was definitely not his night. He kind of got ragdolled. But the dude fights. And yeah. he's fun to watch. Sometimes he's a little irritating when he starts talking too much. But... Dude, he, I love his attitude. I think he's fun to watch. He's talented. The one thing that he's not great at is his wrestling is not great. It's getting better, but it's not yeah. great. But his ground game is outstanding. And his stand-up, he's got good hands. He's just going to yeah. have a hard time with what MVP does in the stand-up. When you go back and watch when, Ke when Stephen Thompson fought Kevin Holland, yeah. what do you say in the corner? Oh, exactly. He's Stand by. He's fast. And I'm like to myself, if you wait, thought, wait, so you get, if, wait, if you wait thought do you get a load fast. of this? Yeah. Yeah, where do you get a load of this? If you thought that uh, MVP, Yeah, MVP, MVP's fast. <clears throat> um, 
you know, he's he's good at takedown defense. You know, he's got a couple little tricks up his sleeves submission wise. I think obviously Kevin is the better jiu jitsu guy. Oh, no this fight does at the ground. Uh, I don't know. There's just there's a lot of options there. There's a lot of options that could happen. I just wanted to see him fight someone that was in the in the top five, top top eight, somewhere in there. You know, um, fighting Kevin Holland is a stylistic. But I wouldn't say a nightmare. It's just a matchup. Like it's it's a the matchup. It could be a good fight. It could be it could be uh, it could be a boring fight. They're both tall. They're both long. They're both lanky. They're they're both fast. Steve, MVP's faster. Um, the the style of which MVP fights is going to give Kevin Holland some problems in the beginning. Um, he's going to have to lower his level. He's going to have some problems with that. It's it's a it's an interesting style of fight. It's the the height and the reach. MVP is usually the taller, longer guy. That he won't be in this fight. You know, they're probably about equal. I'd say Kevin Hall's a little bit taller, and maybe I don't know if he'll be longer. MVP's really long, <clears throat> but he's. But they're. Uh, I think Kevin Hall's a little bit taller. No, so, I think they're both six three. Are they both six three? Okay, both six, three. so it should be. We're gonna see. We're gonna see what happens. I would just like to have seen a little bit higher, like ranking of a fight. That's all. I but, love that. It fight. is. I think it's great. Cannot wait to see it. I think uh, it's going to be an exciting fight uh, between the two. But if, if he wins, where does he go? Who, MVP? Yeah. Because then, then I'm like, okay, I, my first fight in would have been Stephen Thompson. Now, okay. now if I win, I don't want to fight Stephen Thompson. I want to fight a top three, top four guy. Give me give me a, whoever wins the Gilbert Burst. Let me fight Shavkat. Like, you know they're paying him, John. Oh yeah, they're paying him. You know they're paying him. God bless him. So that's the price you're gonna pay because, like, otherwise he would have went to PFL. And the PFL, I know one. Yeah. <clears throat> so especially knowing that Bellator is going back to Europe, you know, for their shows, though they wanted him there. He can he sells arenas. That guy can sell an arena. So oh, yeah. Wembley, so he can sell arenas. So, anyways, it's a good fight. I do agree. I just want to know, like, where do you think he goes after that? Because if he wins, I don't want to see him fight Stephen Thompson anymore. I want to see him fight someone else up there in that top well, two or three. First off, Stephen Tom- when you look at Stephen Thompson, he's sitting at six. Right now, where's Kevin at? Kevin's at 12. Yeah. Okay, so if he beats Kevin, that puts him in the top 15, somewhere, we'll say around 12 or 11, somewhere in there. He's still five spots under Thompson. Put him against Thompson. You're so selfish, Tom. I am. <laughs> I admit that. You're selfish. I totally like, admit that, though. I, I, I just, <laughs> Josh, if you haven't figured this out, this is about me. It's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I figured this out. Uh, uh, all right, but overall, good fight with Kevin Hall and MVP. Uh, all right, guys. Hey, go to OnlyFans.com slash weighing in. OnlyFans.com slash weighing in. I know, look, at, I, I've been able to finally get up a couple of my posts from Mexico up there. I've got up some of my uh, – some other stuff. I'm having a little bit of some issues. I guess something I posted with my IV from CPI stem cells. They said that it wasn't, uh, I wasn't able to post it. I don't know if they thought it just said like it was uh, something illegal. So I think maybe they thought drugs and the picture that they thought it was drugs or something. And I'm thinking to myself, man, (laughs) like really? (laughs) So, so they, but so I, I have, I'm in contact with them trying to get all my uh, like IV stuff because I have a lot of my videos is me, me showing you guys this is the NAD, this is the Myers, this is the ozone, you know, this is me going into the hyperbaric. This, this is, is the heroin. Pain. This is a- yeah. This is, <laughs> and so, so for some reason it's getting it's uh, it's getting like blocked on OnlyFans. So I'm having, trying to go through the process of getting it unblocked. So, like, Dude, I got. I'm going to tell you right now. I am so impressed with the fact that you could actually get blocked by OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Somebody <laughs> sent me a message. He goes, "Hey, do you know that your page is is not is not working?" And I'm like, "What do you mean?" They're if- like, "Hey." You're your OF page, like it's taking down your post. Like I saw a post and then it said your post was deleted. And I was like, and, I, and, it, and it wasn't because of me. They, Cause I, I don't know how you would know that. I mean, like they, he goes, yeah, it's gone. He's like, and you were talking about how you posted it. He's like, and then it's gone. 
Yeah. I don't know how he's like, it's not there anymore. So we figured he's, I figured they took it down. So yeah. Then I went through my, like through the, the channels to show what videos are being held up. And there's like, there's like six of them being held up. Uh, one of them, one of them was the Sean Strickland and uh, Drickus uh, altercation because I think they thought that it was illegal, like fighting on the streets. I don't know if they don't allow you to show it or what, but hold it. You could put a video of you getting your butthole bleached, <laughs> <laughs> and they would put uh, that out there. But the, no, I don't not know. gonna put your stem cells. Okay, got it. <laughs> So we're working I understand, on it. So. I, I understand this. It just totally makes sense yeah. to me. Well, I was able to I was able to get one of my videos up, and then I got the second one. I had to repost again today, and it looked like it went through. But then the first ones all went through also. So, but hey, guys, I, I am I am putting them up. I am getting more content up for you guys. I know that we were been dragging, but I know uh, during the holidays, you know, a lot of people are going to be around. So hit us up at onlyfans.com/slash Wayne in. You guys will be spending time with family. Sometimes you just sneak out of the room and just get you're getting bored talking with your aunt and uncle. Okay, come on over to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne in. Check us out. I got some some extra content going up there for you guys. So, all right, Dave, what else you got? All right, this time we're gonna have a little bit of fun with uh, a fight that's not real yet. But uh, Cody Garbrandt's calling it calling for Davidson Figueredo fight at UFC for three hundred. What do you guys think about that one? I think it's a great call out. You know, he called that out after his. Uh win over keller and i thought hey smart call out you're talking about a guy that was a champion fighting an another guy who was a champion that only elevates the fight it elevates whoever wins it i thought that was a smart call out by cody garbrandt i think it's a good matchup between the two you know garbrandt tried to go down to 125 which i i th always thought that was a yeah not an intelligent move but he's back where he belongs at 135 uh Speed wise, wrestling wise, everything. Cody Garbrandt is still got a ton of talent, and Figueredo in his last fight showed that he has speed. He fought well. He fought smart. I think it's a great call out. I think his career is going to really take a turn for the better. Not that I'm for the better, I'm acting like <laughs> as if he was some scrub before. Yeah, but like I think him being at 35, <clears throat> he'll be undersized, but. The speed, his aggressiveness, his ability to get takedowns. Now working with Henry Cejudo, his grappling is not bad. It's not great. It's not spectacular, but it's not bad. And um, he's super aggressive on the he's feet. Got power. I mean, yeah, he's got power. And Cody Garbrandt's got power. Oh, yeah. Cody's just got to continue to fight smart. He's got takedown defense. He trains with really good guys who are good with good wrestling. He's got a great corner on the on the mitts. You know, he's got good good mitt work. Got good trainers that surround him. He's just got to fight smart. If he fights smart, stays composed, let the fight develop in front of him, his speed and Figgy speed, the two of them together, it's going to be whoever can catch the other person clean getting in. Yep. And phew, someone's going to go to sleep. I believe yep. it. Someone's going to go to sleep. I think that's going to be a fantastic fight. Fantastic fight. Yep. And I want to know, I want for me, what interests me, interests me the most is how Figgy approaches the fight because now training with Henry, getting better at the wrestling, fighting a lot smarter, not just reckless and careless. Is he going to wrestle more in this fight knowing that Cody has a little bit probably of a, a disadvantage on the ground in comparison to him? But they're pretty equal on the feet, so why take that chance? Will he fight and try to wrestle? Whereas Cody, Cody can wrestle, take down defense. He's got good wrestling himself. But that's not been – never has that ever been Cody's no. MO. No. He's going to try to stand on the feet. I like when he utilizes his kicks more because it sets up his hands more. When he utilizes his kicks like he did with Dom. He kicked a lot in the Dom fight. Yeah, he did. And that helped a lot with his success because that kept Dom a little bit more loyal to when he was going to shoot. Hell, he, even head, he even head kicked Dom. Yes, he did. I forgot about that. <laughs> he opened, opened up a big old cut with that. Yeah. Shot. Yeah. Everyone, everyone's trying to say, "Oh, it was a headbutt." I was like, "No, that wasn't a headbutt, dude. That was that kick." But I watched it because you know, you, you know, when, when someone gets cut, they, all of a sudden it just looks like a line, and then all yeah. of a sudden it goes rip, and you watch it start yeah. to bleed. You go, "Ah, oh, there it is." That yep. sucks. <laughs> but he, um, but with with uh, with Cody, you know how he's going to fight. He's going to fight boxing centric, 
add a couple kicks here and there, but he's got to kick a little bit more, I believe, if he's going to fight Figgy. You know, get to the calf a little bit, maybe. And, and um, keep, his, keep his calf from being eaten up because it. This is true as well. He takes damage on that lead leg. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna see, uh, but I think I think great, great call out, and I think it's gonna be a great fight. Yep. Next one, day. All right. <clears throat> Next fight, similarly, um, Willie is calling out Alexa Grasso to UFC fight uh, to a fight at UFC three hundred for the um, one twenty five title. I'll tell you, if you if you're the UFC, you're looking at it, and you're going if if it's gonna go any way. You're going to say, all right, you know, I've seen Alexa try to be down at 115. That did not go well as far as her making weight at times. It mm-hmm. did not go well with sometimes with her performance. So, you know, if you're <clears> going to do this, you'd want Wei Lee to go up, you know, fight for Grasso's title. Then uh, if Wei Lee wins. Well, Alexa, Alexa already came back and said, can you make 125? Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 She already said it. She's, she's not going down. Yeah. Well, the. You know, she started at straw weight, if you remember, and yeah. it's like, yeah, too too many. You know, she's outgrown that mm-hmm. weight class, and you know, go where you're the strongest at 125. That's your weight. That's your class. Your belt on the line. Yeah, you know, I think that's a, you know for UFC 300. If that's what they're talking, that's the kind of fights. You know, Dana's already come out saying, look, you know, when you see the UFC 300 card, you're gonna say that cannot be the first prelim of the fight. Well, yeah. Awesome. This is the way to do I it. I mean, you've got to think. They've probably been working on this thing for a while. Oh, People yeah. have been talking about 300 have. since since like UFC 250. Yeah. They've been talking about 300. And um, <clears throat> I'm excited about 300. Uh, I, th- I think he is, I think he is going to deliver. But I want to – it's got to be something obviously outside the box that, that none of us have really thought of. Like what are we looking at? Are we going to see – I've we've heard everything, John. We're going to see Misha versus Holly again. Are we going to see Misha versus Ronda? Well, these are things we've heard. Yeah, but Brock's going to yeah, come I, back I, and I, fight. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we've we've heard all these things. To me, Connor's already said he's he, or basically you saw it. I think said that he can't fight till or not Usada, but uh, the say, UFC they, said they, that they, they don't have Usada now, so he can fight whenever. They yeah, want. but they're not going to fight until Connor's not fighting until summertime or whatever it is, July. Is what they've said. Maybe that changes. Who knows? Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm excited about 300. Oh, I just want to. I'm looking forward to what the what the big announcement is because this is what they do, you know. And I was reading something today too that the UFC is like PR machine, and I've had to make it very clear their PR machine is is the best in the business. I can invest in. Yeah, second to none. I think the only other PR machine that I think is probably better than theirs is the NFLs. Yeah, it's impressive. It's oh, really yeah. impressive on what they do and how they do it. And, you know what they've done to get there. It's very impressive. So, what else you got for us, Dave? All right, we do have a boxing card this weekend, so I want to get your thoughts. We got Anthony Joshua versus Otto Wallen and Deontay Wilder versus Joseph Parker, and then John, yeah. you've got a fight card here. Is there anything else you want to touch on? You know what? That this is the problem with Anthony Joshua taking on Otto Warren. You're taking a look at that, and you're going, "Man, that's just not a that's not a fight you would really care about seeing." This is Eddie Hearn. Anthony Joshua is his guy. This is match Matchbox Promotions and stuff, and no one cares about seeing Anthony Joshua against Otto Warren. I'm just being honest. The co-main is Deontay Wilder against Joseph Parker. That's a way better fight if you're looking for action and things that you think, okay, Joseph Parker's he's got power. He's he's a tough dude from Australia. Deontay Wilder, he's got power. Okay, that's a fight you want to see. Even even Daniel Dubois against Jarrell Miller. Okay, you know that one is ten rounds, but you know that's. <clears throat> It's just when you when you have the main event and you go, who cares? That's the problem. Do, do you see? Do you see a little bit of a thing though? Like this card. I mean, there's three decent fights, not great fights. Yeah. There's three decent fights on the card though. Yeah. You think? I feel like they're taking a page kind of out of MMA and going, "Hey, let's start putting 
decent fights, maybe a, a three or four of them. Well, hold on. Two or th- they do have the on that card is a title fight with Bivol. Bivol is taking on it for it's for the light heavyweight, and he's mm-hmm. taking on um, Lyndon Arthur, twelve rounds. But the one to see is Bivol against David Benavides because I watched them sparring, and oh my god, I can't wait to see that <laughs> fight because dude, they were throwing, they were going. You know, Benavides is just on fire right now. Bivol is a tough fight for anybody. So, I mean, they're like, Wait, are you talking ahead. about practice? Practice. Are you talking about practice? Dude, hey, <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know, this is where you, you talk about practice. Yeah. You go, man, if you are the trainer for either of those guys, yeah. you're sitting there saying, hey, just go out there sparring. You know, these guys start throwing and they're throwing heat and you're going, all right, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Yeah. No, they're not listening to anything. No, they're going. They don't they're, listen to they're just going. But there are no, you know, the, the Bivol fight does make it an interesting, you know, card. I think that the uh, Deontay Wilder against Parker that's a good fight. I just your headliner is Anthony Joshua, and that's because look at that's Eddie Hearn's guy, and I understand it. But mm-hmm. this is what's wrong with sometimes you know people. Can, playing about the UFC and Dana. No, this is what's wrong with boxing because there's too many good fights that could be made, you know, Mm -hmm. that are out there. It's Anthony Joshua against Deontay Wilder. Now you're talking about something something you want to see. But Well, John, until they start having five fights on a card that makes that make that have name value, then they're never going to be able to, they're never going to be able to build up young stars. And that's the problem with boxing is that you just see a guy, oh, he's 30 and 0. He must be good. Is he really, though? No, yeah. we all know it's a padded record. We follow boxing. We know what it is. People follow their, their, their boxers from the minors in their local area. That's why they're so hardcore about them. No, who, who's, the, uh-huh. who's the one boxer that doesn't have any kind of padding on his record? There's one. Who? Give it Lomach- to me. Lomachenko. Lomachenko fought for a title. It was either his pro debut or his second fight. How he many fight fighting for a world title? He had yeah, four, 400, have, 400 amateur fights. That's what I was going to say. I was like, didn't he have like 280 amateur fights? You're saying 400. Yeah, he had a, okay. it's a little, a little okay. over 400. Jeez, man. <laughs> I would have wanted to get paid for some of those. Oh, <laughs> tell me about it. No, I get it. But, I mean, I look. I think. I think there's. I think there's still hope for boxing. Um, obviously, boxing will always be around. It's just a matter of I think how these promoters should structure it. Take a page out of what MMA has done, and put together five good five fight cards. Five fight fight. Card? How do you say that, John? A good five fight main card. There you go. That's the way I was. Looking That's for. exactly what you were going to say. <laughs> and so if they start just to do that and, you know, and you start to build up some young talent on those, on that, maybe the first prelim or not prelim, but the first fight, you know, someone who's good, someone that, and start hyping it up. You'll get more people to come to the arena earlier. I don't know if you've ever, you've obviously have been to high level boxing matches. I have too. Just a couple. No one gets there until the main event. Oh, I know. It's crazy. It's crazy to me. That's I mean, crazy. like. It's so, it just, I wrap my head, I'm like, you paid this much money for these tickets. And like some of them don't even come until like round three or four. No, I know. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, But, and I think if you just spark more interest into the first, you know, first one or two fights in boxing, start putting together a good, those good first five or those five fight cards, it's going to be perfect. I think it'll be perfect because then you can build talent that way. You can build more of a following and you get more people to buy the pay-per-views. I don't know. Maybe I'm just biased to the MMA way. Uh, I'm not saying you need to have eight and 10 and 12. And sometimes Bellator had 22 fights on a card. Now it's just pulling my hair out, but you know, <laughs> I don't blame you for that, I, but yeah. it's, it's uh, but like, you know, I enjoyed seeing a lot of the young talent and following their career. And some of them made it and some of them didn't. You know, but I enjoy I enjoy it. It's like, damn, that kid's good, or he's gonna be something. And then you see him fizzle out three fights later. You're like, ah, I was wrong. Or sometimes you're like, ah, oh, that kid's not that good. And all of a sudden, he's knocking two 
knocking people out in his next two fights, you're like, oh, wait, maybe I was wrong. Yep. You know? And so there's something to be said there that I think that the the MMA does that helps build up the, the young uh, athletes. There's no – if there's – one thing that MMA has done is it, it has made it to where the fans now expect to have yeah. good cards, you know, good fights throughout that card. And – just about you know every time the promotions are delivering those yeah very true so next day and, wow. all right yeah we'll we'll, we'll take away on that one <laughs> give us one more i would have done a better job if i don't know <laughs> no well i don't have another one there i can um i can go over a fan question if you want get, get, let's 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 do two fan questions right. hey guys i want to just i want to make sure you guys uh understand I'm a little distracted. I got kids running down the hall. I got the bathroom like next door and I'm hearing them. But I, I'm thinking to myself, please don't try to unlock the door and come in here. Like, so I've been a little distracted today. It's show I've, I feel a little off. I apologize. Uh, but I uh, wanted to let you guys know that. Uh, Mr. F- Mr. Fax yeah. asks, why does the Bilal Muhammad get, get, this is poor English. Why does the Bilal Muhammad gets unnecessary hate? I want both of you to speak honestly. <laughs> uh, there's a couple things, John. One of them is political. Um, this bottom line is people hate him because he supports Palestine and some people support Israel. You know, and that's why that's John, let's just be honest. He no, gets I... hate. He, he gets so much hate. Uh, on there, and I'm not. I'm not saying which way is right. I'm not going to say it. Look, there's things going on that I have no idea. I can't even wrap my head around what goes on. That's one of the reasons why. The other reason is, is um, people think that he's like some sort of boring fighter. I'm like, I don't know if you've watched him That's fight. The thing that I, I don't know if you watched him fight. The guy, he fucking fights. Yeah. I don't. I don't understand what you guys. Maybe in his early career, he would just try to take people down, just try to like, like maul them and just, but didn't throw a lot of shots. I'm sorry, but man, like his fight with Sean Brady, he did what the fuck he wanted. No, on like the feet, stood, too. You know, and then Vicente Luque, like he's he's good. Bilal Muhammad is good. He's deserving of the title shot. I, I saw, I heard Leon say he didn't deserve it, but I'm like, well, then who are you going to put there? You know, I, I'm a little. There's no like, doubt he deserves the title yeah. shot. Like, you know, when you sit there and you say, "Well, it's because of the Palestine thing," it may there may be people that don't because of it, and I don't know. But that he's been fighting a lot longer than, you know, that has become a, a current issue. You know, not yeah. that it hasn't in the past too, but. Uh, but John, that 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 confrontation between those two countries been going on for a long time. Oh, that's what that's I said. What, I said that's what I'm saying. That, the, hate that goes, the hate goes on just because. Look at, it's hard when I I don't blame any fighter. You know, I, I I always I always admire fighters that you know that basically have pride in their country. Connor had pride in in Ireland. He was proud to be an Irish fighter. Fedor was proud of, you know, his country in Russia. You know, mm-hmm. now the one thing I will say is pull all you're an American. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> so, you know, be proud of this. The whole Palestine thing, if that's what that your ancestry, fine, but you're an American. I look at Bilal and, and I think what you said is there's a lot of people that look and think that he's boring. I don't know how. Yeah. Every time that I've watched him fight, I, when I refed him fight, you know, he got beat when I refed him fight, when I was refing him one, but he was fighting his ass off. He was doing everything he could in that fight. And you look and you go, man, you know, he goes out and he fights. That's all I can ask of anyone. I look for a guy that goes out and gives everything that they have at that moment in that cage. Bilal Muhammad answers that call every time. I yeah. don't know. I don't know why people don't like him, but yeah, that's people are finicky. Mm, it's true. One I love more, Dave. <laughs> Give us one more, Dave. Yep. Uh, Ice Cold asks, "Why does nobody talk about referee judges pay? I've read they make a thousand per night, if not less. Please shed some light on the pay for rest judges." Well, it all you know when you sit there and you you put out that kind of number. 
uh, those are old numbers. Uh, those that's what I was working. <laughs> and it, and it also depends on, you know, there's so many shows that are not the UFC that are not PFL. We're not Bellator at the time or any of those, a athletic commission, when it comes to the pay, a lot of them will we'll take California has an entire system that they go through. Nevada has an entire system. It is first off, who is the promotion? So if it's the UFC and it's a pay-per-view, that's when you will see the referees and the judges making the most money that they can make. And it used to be like when I was refing, you know, when, when I started refing, it was, you know, well, not when I started, it doesn't matter because there was no regulation. <laughs> but when, when I first went to uh, Nevada and started working there, I believe I started off at $900 for a championship fight. That was for a championship fight and night. It's not like, oh, I got that just for the one fight. So it was 900 bucks. Then it went to 1000 Then it went to 1200 But now I believe Herb just did the Leon Edwards versus Colby Covington. That was in Nevada. He got $2,500 for that fight. So the pay has gone up. Public records is like yeah. is it out, okay? It's public okay. record. Yeah. So he gets twenty five hundred dollars for that fight. But now Herb can go and also do a show in Nevada that's a small show and make four hundred dollars for the night. Mm. Okay, because it doesn't have you know a big draw as far as crowd. It doesn't have TV. We'll say. It doesn't have all these things that add on to what the commission is going to say. You deserve more based upon the level and the, uh, you know, aura of the fight that's there. So when you sit there and you say, well, what do the judges make? It just depends on the fight. You know, I can on the, on the card and the show, but most of them, like if you're doing the LFA, okay, the LFA is a good show, but You'll make somewhere in the area, if you're a, a referee, about $500 for that night. And maybe maybe 350 350 to 500 And if you're a judge, you'll make somewhere between 250 and 350 That's what you make for the night. So and, you know, all these shows that you see judges and refs doing, many of them, you know, they're making $100 for the night. You know, the Dude. big shows, yes. It goes up to 2,500 right now. That's that's about the most that you'll see. Unless uh, it's an international, like when her, when you see Herb, you know, now doing uh, one and you see him doing it in Singapore. That is, there's no commission there. That is a contractual uh, agreement between Herb and one fighting championship. So Chatri. Chatri is paying Herb what Herb has requested and that Chatri says okay to. So he's, he's making more doing that, but that's because there is no state athletic commission, no regulation. It's all on them. Hope that helps. Makes sense. Makes sense. But I mean, like <clears throat> to get to that level, you got to pay your dues. Yeah. That's why there's a like, lot of, week, there's a lot of weekends of traveling. That's why I went to Russia all the time. Yeah. <laughs> You know, hey, I made a lot of money there, and that's you know they they would pay, and I was you know, my whole thing. I I always told everyone, I said, you you don't you're not paying me to referee, you're paying me to get on an airplane, because I hate getting on the fucking airplane. I love doing the refereeing, so yeah, you know, but I'm not going to get on that airplane unless we agree to this amount. Your call. What a what a diva. What a dick. <laughs> what a diva. What a dick. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's, it's just, it, you got to look and you only have so much time and you got to say, how much is it worth for you to get on that airplane, be on the fucking airplane for, you know, 10 hours, you know, sit in a hotel, do the thing, and then get back on an airplane. Mm -hmm. That's really what you get paid for. At least that's the way I look yeah. at it. Yeah, yeah, because there could, there could be full, like some of the flights that we have taken, like to Italy, and it's 23, 22 hours, you know, oh, to yeah. get there. It's horrible. Like, damn, man, really? I've been there this long. <laughs> you're 
your family's gone to bed and woke up, went to school, and came home, and went back to sleep. <laughs> like, by the time you get yeah, there, that's it. You know, you got to so, figure, you know, you, you look at it when you were fighting, you traveled more for cornering than you ever did for fighting. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And so all of that travel you did was nothing compared to what someone like Herb or I did as far as I was yeah. doing somewhere in the area of close to 400, 350 to 400,000 air miles a year. That's a lot. Jeez. It is. It is a lot. It's a lot. It is a lot. I was definitely blessed that I only had to, um, that I only had to fight in San Jose, literally like down the street. Oh yeah. <laughs> I could be out of my front door and in the arena within seven to 10 minutes. It was awesome. I loved it. <laughs> it was yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Well, all right guys hey we're gonna wrap this up i want to hey, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button i know like i said i got a little distracted the noise background noise and, and stuff so there was times where i just lost my train of thought and was completely like going off on something that probably wasn't even relevant but uh <laughs> i'll get my shit together before this weekend and uh you know i'll be back home in my own house which is kind of nice in texas <laughs> in texas you and, gotta be um, honest now though how you like in texas <sighs> You know, it's, I, I do like it. I do like it. Um, I just like being in my own home. That's, that's, you know, <laughs> yeah. we just talked about, you're like, you're not, you're not paying me to ref. You're paying me to get in the plane and go to the yeah. hotel. And, you know, there's something about just sleeping in your own bed. Something that's about true. being in your own home. You know, I, and then not I'm, only that. Someday I'll have my own home. You know, <laughs> 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 you do, you do. You have oh, a big fifth wheel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, it, I think for me though, it's the hardest is, is, uh, I miss my, I like, I have a lot of close, close friends that have been through me. My, my family's here. My mom's side, the whole family's here. You know, it's a big family too, the Mexican side of me. And so it's, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of my cousins are here. So being able to see them, try and see them, you miss some cause they're not lines. Schedules don't line up. So yeah. you want to see them, you don't get to, there's also some business stuff that I have. I so I have to visit and see and take care of. And those sometimes is like catching up. And so there's a lot, there's a lot that I'd like to, you know, you miss your friends and your family the most, obviously, but if you could just pick them all up and move them to you, it'd be great. But you know, you can't. So uh, you miss those things. You don't, I don't miss, I, I do miss mountains. <laughs> I, do, <laughs> I do miss the mountains. I miss the mountains. Uh, I, but I was telling someone this morning, I said, uh, you know, two times a day, and maybe you guys, if you guys follow me on social media, you guys will see. When I go to the morning and take my son to school, I stop at the, I drive the golf cart down to the edge of the community and I, I watch the sunrise, you know, if the clouds aren't there. And then at the end of the day, I, I drive to the other side of the community and I watch the sunset. And watching the sunrise is like, it's, it's beautiful. But not only that, though, it's, it's, there's no mountains that get in the way. And it's just something that is, it's different. You've got to see it. You see how much the, the whole sky is lit up with the sunset, not just like parts of it in the way, you know, the only time I really loved the sunsets in, in California was on the beach, which is very similar to when you look I was at gonna say, that's the only place the sun sets in California. Yeah. It's, on, it's the water. Not, well, <laughs> not like when you're in the city in San Jose, the, all the mountains that hit Santa yeah, Cruz, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking, but the only time I like it when it goes behind the mountains is when you can see the sun rays come through the clouds. Yeah. It's an artistic. And you know why? It's beautiful. Because huh? in your mind, you're going, that's God. <laughs> yeah. I think for, for a lot of people, for all a right. lot of people, that's exactly what they're thinking. That's it. So, hey, uh, you know, but I just want to let everyone know, um, that i appreciate you guys supporting us supporting even when we do shows like this and there's a little bit of probably of an echo and stuff but i want to thank you all it's been another year we're getting closer to new year's and uh you guys have continued to support us we hit 120,000 this week um in subscribers i'd like to try to get that number up definitely probably closer to 200 by the end of next year if we can do that so if you guys can share our content share our material follow us on all of our platforms at weighing in on Instagram at Wayne in on on Twitter or X, okay, and uh, also John McCarthy uh, Instagram, also John McCarthy MMA, and on Twitter John McCarthy and at the Real Punk on both Twitter and uh, Instagram. Give us a follow. Hopefully, you guys um, appreciate the content we guys provide for you guys during this holiday season. And uh, John, take us away, bud. Hey, for everyone out there, 
coming up. Hope you have a fantastic Christmas, a happy Hanukkah, whatever it is that you and your family celebrate. I hope it's a good one. I know there's no fights this weekend, so spend it with your family, and we will see you.